Okay, guys, uh, a very quick one. The next topic for day 27 is uh, the conduction of electricity through liquids and gas. It is not that common in your exams, but mostly because it's more like chemistry or we don't want to value anything. So let's quickly talk about it and solve uh, some important questions from uh, what we have gathered. Mostly when we talk about conduction, a very quick one, uh, it's we talk basically about uh, the state of matter, which you have done a lot in your chemistry. So you know we we'll talk about the basic state of matter, which are solids, the liquids, <clears throat> and the gases. So the basic things you need to understand is mostly the carrier of charges. And the, and the solids, electron collide with each other to the wall. And they will they conduct electricity for liquids, which is basically what we're talking about. They talk about free mobile AMs. So please note that. And for gases, ordinarily they don't conduct electrons, they don't con conduct electricity. But we need to keep something at the back of our mind that uh, from the knowledge of ionization and stuff like that in your chemistry. These also conduct electricity, and uh, the carrier of their charges is uh, the free mobile ions and the electron combined together because at a particular condition, which is always, we say, at uh, high voltage, that is the way we call it high voltage and uh, low pressure. In fact, I think it is more common amongst students that gas is conducted at high voltage and low pressure. So this conduction is called steady conduction. Always keeping in mind at high voltage and low pressure. So the basic thing we talked about is uh air molecule also affects the conductivity. If I want to go to the experiment on how gases glow fluorescent tube and stuff like that, which we've talked about some of them in under eating effect of current. Do you remember? So but for now, I won't go too much about uh, this because I know in details in your chemistry, you talk about liquid conduction, that is a Faraday law of uh, Faraday electrolysis experiment, which I hope you have studied. And if not, you can talk about it with respect to question. The two laws, the first and the second law, which I believe you know. So, and about this conduction, don't misquote me. I said the, the conductivity of gas, in fact, basically we write it in the level class as a rate of emission of gas. Emission rate is proportional to the voltage, inversely proportional to the pressure, which is a P, and the mass as well. But also we'll call some air molecules, as the case may be. So basically what I'm saying is uh these are simple aspects of physics which relate a little bit with chemistry, but you need to understand how they conduct. So we we'll call the conduction, steady conduction at high voltage and low pressure. In fact, at low voltage, we say gases don't conduct, they rather discharge. Discharge means you understand. So please understand the opposite of conduction. Uh, we have different type of uh, discharge. So discharge occurs at low at low voltage. When voltage or PD is low, we expect what discharge to occur. So and in this stage, we can talk about what we call glue mechanisms. How this discharge tube, you know, when I say discharge tube, as is low pressure tube, you understand what I mean by that. Formation of fluorescence and how your filaments and all, all these discharge tube also works on the principle of conduction of gases. Like I said, they don't have free electrons or like uh, solids and uh, free ions like uh, liquids. But by ionization, by removal of electrons and ions or photons, we are still going to talk about modern physics next class, which is going to be reading of modern physics. You understand all these postulates and understanding of some various things. For, for now, Let's limit ourselves with respect to electrolysis and, uh, and conduction, which I call uh, in gases, which I said under a certain condition of high voltage and 
low priority. So I think that is enough to actually answer all questions that are here. So let's wait then because I only want to use 20 minutes. And I will use one for each to actually do. Now let's continue. The first one says which of the following statements about electrolysis is not correct? The substance in solution and the electrolytes become ionized. Yes, electrolysis is electrolyte. Electrolytes are substances that become ionized when they what? When they do electro electrolytes, they are substances that become ionized when they dissolve. You note that these are liquids in which electrodes have been dissolved. Electro, you know, we say cathodes and anodes. So this is a very correct question. Substance in solution, the electrolyte become ionized. So as they ionize, we say oxidation takes place. As the cathode reduction takes place, oxidation takes place at the anode. <laughs> reduction takes place at the cathode. So please that note that oxidation is lost. Reduction is gain. Ions are electrically charged and are attracted towards the electrode when the potential PD as you pass PD across them, you know the connection, shorty shorty concept. Then you expect what ions to be what to start what to start what to be electrically charged. And when it works, we have when they electrically charged, we have positive and negative ions. Cations and ions. Cations migrate to cathode, and ions migrate to anode. A little bit of chemistry. This is what I said, and that is why chemistry also is so nice. They are very white, but uh, there are some aspects of chemistry that I believe students should know very well. In fact, for a level, it is not so so, so difficult. It is so direct and uh, basic, to be honest. It is also correct. The third statement says ion may be discarded at the electroforming bubbles or deposits. Yes, that is exactly the basis of electrolysis. We said uh, oxidation takes place at anode, reduction takes place at cathode. Oxidation takes place by loss of electron, reduction takes place by gain of electron. So they will be discharged at anode and cathode respectively. According to Faraday, there are some factors that affect their discharge rate. You might have learned about that in your junior classes. So that's also very important. The next one is correct. The mass deposited depends on the length of time for which we're in for two years. In fact, according to the first law of Faraday, mass is proportional to quantity of electricity. Basic, the quantity of electricity in your physics, you have studied that is correct, multiplied by time. So on simplification, a constant we call, we call Z. Then Q is IT, you can write Z, the way most of the students always call it in my own class. I call it Z. So we have Z here stands for electrochemical equivalence. Shorty, shorty concept, electrochemical. So that makes that statement also valid. So if that statement is valid, what we are saying may get to the world. The last statement will be wrong. The mass of gas set free of metal deposited is proportional to square of current. No, it is not square, but the air version to correct. So this is the answer as the incorrect statement. We move to the next question. Excuse me, guys. The next question says I have to rush 10 20 minutes is what I'm going to use for this. The unit of quantity of electricity is called dash. Quantity of electricity, we've talked about that, is measured in coulombs. We've talked about that time and time again. Current is measured in ampere, PD is measured in volts. Ammeter is an instrument used to measure current. Electromotive force is the total work done in moving the what? <laughs> PD around the circuit. So please note that. That's the answer to this. Coulomb is the answer. No time to waste time. Next in the next slide. I told you a lot of questions will be dropped for you guys to solve yet. The electrochemical equivalent of the metal is this. The mass of the metal that has a current of 5 amps will deposit from a suitable bath in one hour is that. Conversion is important, my dear students. Time should be measured in seconds. Always keep it in one hour. It's simply like 3600 seconds. 3600 seconds. 60 times 60. Mass is equal to Z I T Z. We talked about that. We are looking for the mass, just multiply Z is this, a 0 0.126 times 10 to the power of negative 6. Multiply that by current was deposited in 5 amps. And the last answer is 3600. So on simplification, you pick the right answer, guys. And I only want to make this class, like I said, it's one of the simplest class. You can do. I think this should be the answer. Option E, but that is the way you solve that. I hope students are going to get this because I want you to work a little bit. And that says in the electrolysis experiment, a cathode of mass 5G is found to weight 5.01 after a current of 
5 amps flow for 50 seconds. What is their electrochemical equilibrium? Make Z subject of the formula is Z equal to equals to M over IT. So on simplification, look at it. A cathode mass and it was, it was trying to weight 5 point. So apparent change in mass, you can say delta M. You don't need to waste your time. These are shorty, shorty something. 5.01 minus 5 gram, so which is, is 0 0.1. Yeah. So that is the mass we are going to use. So the mass deposited is 0 0.1. You divide that by the product of the current, that is 5, and the time, which is 50. So basically, this is so simple. So that's 0 0.1 divided by 250. On simplification, you have the answer. Like I said, this class is for you to actually walk and drop your answer. So this is the answer to this. So expect questions on this also in chemistry, not only really your in your field. So that we start about that. We move to the next one. These are simple, simple things which I believe you can do. This should be the answer to that. You can say one over two fifty, or you say the same thing as saying ten to the negative one. If you want to use your indices, you guys know this, and this same thing as saying twenty five times ten. So as this move forward, this is minus one minus one minus two. 25 and says by minus 2. You understand what I mean by that? So it's a 1 over 25. 0 0.04. This should be the answer. But I'm not I'm not going to tell you how the answer from about. Point your on screen calculator and get the answer and provide the answer under the comment section. The next one, guys, time is not always on our side. Look at the same concept, same question, but we just need to be careful. The electrochemical equivalent of SIVA was this. If 36.0 gram of silver is deposited during electrolysis or by electricity on the surface by passing current for five minutes, you are looking for the current. We've talked about M is equal to Z, Z I T. This time around, just make the current so therefore we can say repetition. Current is equal to M over Z. Substitute your parameter. I hope you can do this as well. 36 divided by Z is chemical equivalent 0. 0, 0, 1, 2. Multiply by your time. You convert 5 minutes to seconds. That's stay on the seconds. I hope you to understand this. So you comment your answer as usual. We are not wasting time. This is a very simple and straightforward topic. The next question says, gases conduct electricity under, I told you, basically they don't conduct electricity, but they conduct electricity at high voltage and low low pressure. So please note that I've talked about that steady conduction is IPD and uh, low pressure. So please keep that in mind. Just look for that. I told you conduction or emission. Conduction is proportional to the voltage but it must be to pressure and mass. So this is the logic you can always use and uh, I said uh, low pressure and high voltage. That is the answer to this question. We move to the next one. The next question, which of these is the order of effect produced when pressure of a discharge tube is progressively decreased? This is low pressure. We know that uh, at low pressure, you expect was steady conduction. So formation of long streets of light or thin streamers in the luminous gas between the electrode, perfect fluorescent of, of the glass tube, yes, Glowing of air near the cathode. Absolutely. Now, this experiment, I think I've done it also under my page as well. You can watch it. So I told you gases don't conduct at what uh, at, uh, gases conduct at low pressure. So please note that as in high at high pressure, they discharge. At low pressure, they what they conduct. Or we'll cause steady conduction. So during the discharge, what in the discharge you will of course the glow mechanism. I've talked about this on my concepts and I've explained mechanisms. Next. Now, I said uh, we need to understand there are some stages. In fact, I talk about, I just want to accelerate this class because of time. Now, there are a lot of talk, uh, talks I can still talk about, there are a lot of things that I said, but to accelerate it and make it straightforward with respect to your level, like I do say, I just need to let you know there are some, what we call the cathode uh, tube or what we call the cook tube, cathode or cook tube inside the cathode tube. which also for the crooks too. I've done experiment on this. I've talked about it. 
which is also very, very important. So you can watch it if you have time. So, but for basic knowledge, it's very simple. When pressure decreases, formation of long streaks or things of streamers in the luminous gas between the electrode. No, we have cathode and the handle. You know that definitely. Now, fluorescence of the glass tube, the blowing of air near the watch cathode. These are the three things. Very correct. All three are correct. But in order, if you want to arrange this in order, there will be formation of long streaks. After that, you expect uh, it will glow. It will glow. And when it glow, it will fluoresce. That is the process of what we call glowing mechanism. So it should be like one, three, and two. So please. Keep that at the back of your mind. It should be one, two, and two. So option B should be correct for this, and this is the right answer without wasting your time. Now the next question is the breaking up of a positive column in the DC tube into alternating bright and dark segment. I told you. So that is called what we call that. In fact, if you don't know, it's not way. It's not ammonic emission. We're talking about this tomorrow. More of this we talk about modern physics. It's not field emission. It is called striation or what we call striation. Or oh, it is called striation. So it's the breaking up of positive colors in a discharge tube into alternating bright. So we have bright segments and dark segments inside tube. So the process of what breaking it up into those two segments is called striation. So keep it in mind. We are hearing it for the first time. There's always the first time to everything in life. So that's that about that. And the last segment, which I said. I'm not going to use up to 20 minutes in this video. I only said I will do this for just five minutes. Like I said, there are two phases, dark phase and the what? And the light space, which we call the process is called striation. At that particular point, I told you we have two space. The first space is called cathode or the crook state. That cathode dark space is also called the crook space. And second space is called the Faraday space. So the dark space forms at low pressure. In a discharge tube, so you at low pressure gases conduct, and at low pressure and high voltage gases will conduct. But for glowing mechanism at low pressure, we have what what we call uh, the what the cathode dark space, which is also called Crookes. Another name for cathode dark space, Crook dark space. You can watch my concept video, like I do say, Crook dark space and the Faraday space. So during this transition, these are the two spaces you talk about the dark and the what and the Faraday space. So the Faraday space, these are these cathode dark space is also called crook dark space, cathode dark space. So this is this about this, and uh, maybe I should leave the last question for you to be aware. It's cathode dark space and no cathode dark space is also called crook dark space, cathode dark space, and this is the answer. So this is the answer to the question. Crook dark space and negative no. Faraday space and no, it is the cathode gas space. You know what happened, cations we always move to the cathode, you know, and the Faraday space. So please keep that in mind, and that is all about this topic. Now, the last question, maybe I should leave it for you to do. It's a simple thing which I've explained. When the value of gas is to the scattery lower, just this process we've talked about, what happened? We've talked about it. So let me leave that for you. I told you here, yeah, this is the process, formation of long streak, growing in air. They are fluorescence in two, they are glowing in air. So please note that. Formation of long street of light, fluorescence, then what? The what? It will glow. So it should be one, two, and three, not one, three, one, three, and two. Please note that. It should be one, two, and three. I will have screwed that. Thank God I actually come back. So the same process is now being asked in another language here. Yeah. So let's see what you've got. Try it and drop your work. It's the same thing. You can see. So let's see if you can do that and uh, let me see if you are going to get the answer. So attempt this. So guys, I will stop here. Like I do say, if you find anything interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. We have all videos for physics, for college and high school students. So if you are in need of any, anything in physics, chemistry or mathematics, you can consider subscribing to our channel. We can always help you. We have Telegram and WhatsApp channel as also as Facebook. You can search them. And you can also direct all your message to me via what email or via what you drop the comment also in the comment section. I always attend to your question. So see you guys soon. Do take care. Enjoy a wonderful day. Bye for you.